LFT Research. Um, today I want to do a quick explaining of this video. This video is going to be going out in 1080p. That's the max quality I'm going to give it. Right now the section we're doing is recorded in 4K. I'm going to have a few other clips. A lot of our stuff recently we have been doing has been high speed. There's interesting things going on with high speed. Mostly in order to get as many dots as possible you have to reduce the resolution to get as many pictures per second. So you have this memory and you fill it and how much data can you put into it so what you can do is you can either take a lot of dots off the sensor and get a high quality image or you get a lot of pictures so you get a lot of dots or a lot of pictures you gotta balance the two can we use ai to slightly change that now this right now 4k we're doing it in raw which means what the sensor is grabbing is what goes into the editing software it's not being down compressed it uses a lot more data now for the footage you're going to see, we're mounted up like this. We have this rifle and standing on the stand. Unfortunately, what the footage we're playing with right now was the first shots we took, so I didn't have it fully stabilized. So when I'm in here, I wasn't pushing in enough. So we have the footage rocking. And you can see how this is bouncing up and down a bit. We have that happening during the shooting. So don't take what was going on on that too much into scientific depth because it was rocking because of the mounting system for doing these tests. But what you're gonna to wanna to look at is actual clarity of this. We'll, we have a 4K raw version that we shot that we'll drop in in a second. So you can see what it looks like 4K raw when that's downscaled. So there's gonna be four times more pixels from that raw footage than what you're going to actually see on YouTube. Problem is everything gets down compressed when going to YouTube. So it's not going to be raw going to YouTube, you get a compression. The question is, do I have compression before I send the footage into my editing software? Do I have compression before I send the footage into the upscaling software? What difference does that make? You lose a little bit of quality, but how much is it worth for what we're doing? Here we go, recording in 4K RAW. Now, you'll notice how the lighting down here is a bit less than what we had with Global Illumination. I'm just filming this inside my office, but we have about the same perspective here. This is 4K raw though. As you can bring up here, you can kind of see, you should be able to maybe make out the logo and the actual model number of that suppressor on there. I do that. I'm not doing direct illumination on it. I'm getting it kind of on the edge of it so we don't white it out too much. But this is what you're kind of going with. This is a 4K raw, and then we're gonna downscale everything to 1080p. All right, here is the native 640 by 360 footage that is compressed and upscaled to 1080p just using the editing software. This is the raw footage, same thing done. Now, let's see what Topaz AI has to say about this. That is the upscaled footage. You can see it's a bit crisper. This is the equivalent of 720p. The editing software is still bringing it up to a 1080p export. And now here's the raw, and you'll notice it seems to look a lot better here. Let's actually compare the compressed version. So on the bottom, we have the standard compressed raw footage versus what has been run through the Topaz Labs AI, video AI. Now this is just adding basically two pixels for every one that was already there. And yeah, it does have a little bit of issues, but it still looks pretty darn good. And it's a lot better than just the raw blurry footage. Now, the software does have some really cool features that we are not actually taking advantage of, and that would be frame generation. So it could actually go through and build frames between every frame we captured. The problem is, with what we're doing, I don't feel comfortable using that because we're generating frames and really we're looking at what's occurring in the movement on high speed. So anything that comes in between, I don't feel is actually valid for use for trying to figure out what's going on scientifically. Now, here we have the standard raw image at 640 by 360 on the bottom. Top is the same exact footage, but it's been run through the AI. Ironically, there was uh, noise actually added into that footage. So you had film grain added, and it gave us this level of improvement. It almost looks like you can read it. You can really tell the logo on the suppressor. 
sure, from what you would normally read, it's upside down. But that's just how it happens to be while the can is on the gun. Now, we are going to also take a look here in a moment and compare what it looks like when we are doing the two different upscales to see, hey, what is the difference here? Do we see a difference if we give it raw data versus the compressed footage? Now, one major downside for us in doing raw is we're talking megabytes, like maybe 100 megabytes or less for footage when we're talking compressed. So it takes maybe two or three minutes to save out. When we're using raw, it might take us 30 minutes to save out and a six gig file. It is a massive time investment. But as you can see here, when it's run through the upscaler, the difference is extremely noticeable when you're talking fine details because it's saving the raw data. It's not going, hey, these pixels are close enough together. We're going to only save like one of these and say reference this, reference this, reference this. But there's also still the same raw problems you have with the raw footage of we're only capturing 360p. Now, I could push this software and do a 3x upscale, which would basically give us 1080p. The downside in doing that is there's too many artifacts. So I'm not going to include any of that footage here, but really pushing it far beyond 2x at this point really doesn't do any well. From here on in the video, what you're just going to see is full screen, full scale, no cropping any of it, all of this same footage. Now, as for actual analysis of this footage, that's going to be coming in a separate video. I'm curious, though, what are your guys' thoughts? Do you think it would be worth it for us to actually run through and do this AI upscaling? Do you think that the actual results are going to be scientifically valid still? Or do you think there's some issues going, no, you're adding in stuff that's not there? Now, some of this is I can reference back to the actual item being used to go, okay, yeah, no, that bipod's not like that, or that handguard's not like that. But really, we're looking at here, and this is the differential. And for this series, I will say one thing that we did get for everyone to see is we actually have a separate clip filmed in real time of us actually doing the firing. So you can go and go, oh, they're firing that fast. So really get an idea, because you'll notice there's movement every single time on the barrel. How fast is this being fired? Truth is, we're getting 10 shots in in less than four seconds. So our split time between shots was hovering around 0.19 to 0.22. That's really fast. Just give you an idea where we're at on this. But again, I'd like to hear from you guys and know what you guys actually think. Is this something we should invest in? Is this something you want to see us go forward with? Or is this just an interesting one-off that you're wanting to take a look at, but no, it's not something we should go forward with on the channel. So please comment below. I'd love to hear what everyone has to say. It really does give us a lot. And yes, we're using the watermark because I want to actually show off what the really great software from Topaz does. We did get a friend, Savage1R, from the We Like Shooting podcast to help us out a little bit. And turns out the footage that he ran through the open source AI came out how I would refer as looking very plasticky. So Topaz, what they are adding really does add to the footage and make it extremely useful. But the question is, is that some useful that you guys would like to see, or should we just kind of give a pass on that for future videos? Thanks for watching, and if you like this kind of stuff, please subscribe.